This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. And aloha. Welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And uh, for most of us, it's been a very, to say the least, um, hectic week or enlightening and frightening in so many different ways. Uh, we'll be making comments on that a little bit later in here. But right now, uh, for those of you who have seen the program, or may not, be, have seen, may not have seen the program before, here we talk about uh, a lot of uh, things concerning the veterans in the military community. And today, one of my special guests is Mr. Randolph Alexander. And I want to thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Good. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? I was born and raised here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, live on the northern side of the island. Mm -hmm. uh, went to a public school, graduated, and joined the military mm -hmm. uh, back in 1974. Actually, I joined the Hawaii Army National Guard. Yep. While serving my active duty and my advanced in individual training, I suffered a service connect injury, and that's how I became an eligible veteran mm -hmm. to receive um, VA benefits. Um, I'm a family of military background. My okay. dad, I get kind of emotional. I understand. But uh, my dad and my two older siblings served in the military. Mm -hmm. So if you put everybody's years of service into together, yeah. we have more than 95 years wow. of military service uh -huh. in my family itself. Uh -huh. um, I was discharged in October of 1985. I was still young at that time and uh, I didn't know what I really wanted to do um, to make a career. I wanted to be a career um, military personnel, but other things came up and I wanted to go ahead and experience that um, career also. So I decided to leave mm -hmm. the Army National Guard. Yeah. And total time that you spent in the, in the uh, with your service? A total of 11 years. 11 years. Okay. Yes. And you were medically discharged? or uh, No, I had a dishon uh, honorable discharge, excuse uh -huh. me, honorable yeah. discharge mm -hmm. after 11 years of service. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know that there's a lot of things that I'm um, told that you're involved with as far as with the veterans community. Um, what, is some, what is the main thing that you're concerned about right now is trying to... I'm, trying to, I'm yeah. trying to see if the um, Congress in Washington, D.C. and the military change their policies in regards to offering all veterans, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if they're retired or not, to uh, get some kind of benefits mm -hmm. such as commissary, um, base or post exchange, mm -hmm. um, lodging at the various cabin uh, installations that we have here on the islands, mm -hmm. and um, just to be recognized by the general public mm -hmm. that we served in the military. Right. You know, even though uh, for myself, even though I didn't retire, mm -hmm. um, I feel that um, I should be entitled or should be eligible to receive this type of benefits from the uh, the military. Mm -hmm. So we, I need to have help from other veterans that feel the same way mm -hmm. that I do. Because yeah. it's very, very important for my stand-up um, point of right. view. So you're not talking about additional on the internet or anything like that, but just access to the commissary, PX, and things of that nature? Yes. Uh -huh. um, no no uh, compensation uh, is required. I, we just want to go to the PX, to the commissary, maybe stay at a weekend at Don Bellows Air Force Station in one of those cabins, mm -hmm. or even stay at the Holiday Cove Hotel here in Waikiki. Yeah. You know, and, and just be recognized. Um, you know, every year since the bombing of Pearl Harbor, there's only one day out of the whole year that the Pearl Harbor survivors are recognized. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's the anniversary date, right. December 7th. After that, you don't hear nothing about these survivors right. until the following year. Mm -hmm. They didn't serve only that day. They served every day of the year. Right. So that's when they should be recognized. True, they get recognized from their loved ones, close friends that serve with them in the armed forces. But I feel that we should be recognized by the general public. And even, even if we do go to the military installations, <coughs> 
we should be recognized by the personnel that's working on the base that we're, we're prior service. Mm -hmm. You know, we, um, we did retire, that's, that's true, but still, we should be recognized that we once served in the armed forces to defend the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what arguments or playing the devil's advocate here? Like okay, we have people that uh, say, well, I did 20, 25 years, whatever it is, did the full time anyhow, and I'm entitled to it. And for some, I mean, for someone to say, well, you know, I did my time, but um, I didn't do as much as you did, but I should be, get the, you know, um, fully recognized, which is understandable, and also as far as access to the commissary and PX. How, how much blowback or how much uh, opposition are you getting or what arguments that have you heard and what, how do you counter that, that argument? Uh, there was two incidents and that's why I started this mm -hmm. um, research. And uh, the first incident, it was at the military installation uh, rest camp at Pokai Bay yeah. on the west side. I belong to a, a committee that we formed our first annual reunion for our National Guard unit. Mm -hmm. And it was held at that facility. And we was told that we could make reservations over the phone for the weekend to have a cabin, which I did. Mm -hmm. And the only thing the person asked me on the phone was, do I have an ID, a military ID? And the only ID I have is this ID that I showed uh, to get my medical treatments at the VA clinic. And this is it right here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I should go this way, yeah. <laughs> Either way. Yeah. But anyway, um, when I showed this ID to the uh, receptionist, she said, oh, we don't honor that stuff. I said, excuse me, but we don't honor that stuff. Mm. It's not valid here. Mm -hmm. You need an active or a retired uh, ID card, mm -hmm. either from the military or the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't have that. She said, well, you can't get your room then. She said, the only way you can get a room or a cabin is to have one of your buddies send somebody here to sponsor you for the weekend. Mm -hmm. So I called the general chairman of our committee, if he could come, he sent his son who just turned 18 right. to sponsor me. And, and I, I was kind of puzzled with, with that because there's this young teenager just graduated from high school, just turned 18 mm. and has more benefits than I do after I served 11 years of, in the National Guard, mm -hmm. in the military. Right. Why is that? Mm. Well, I, I asked my question. I asked myself that question yeah. many, many times. Why? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, who? Any of our elected officials that you contacted and then trying to make them aware of the, uh, you know, what you're going through and what a lot of other. I wrote a letter to uh, Senator uh, Macy Hirono. Mm -hmm. Her reply was, "Budget, budget, a budget. It will cost money to have more veterans have the benefits of going to the PX and commissary." and what I was asking for. I also notified in person mm -hmm. and also by letter, uh, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who mm -hmm. was also is a member of the Hawaii Army National Guard. Mm -hmm. I also wrote a letter and went in to speak to the liaison um, person that handles military affairs for the late Mark Takai's office. Uh, before he had anything started, he decided to leave his position there. Mm -hmm. When I called, I was given uh, another person that was taking over. And when I explained my situation and my proposal, I guess you can call it, he said, what makes you think you should be entitled to the same benefits after only serving 11 years in a guard versus my 20 22 years, mm -hmm. went to war, yep. and retired from the U.S. Marines. Yep. My answer to that is, I don't care how many years. It shouldn't be how many years of service you serve, if you retired or not. As long as you served your obligation with the military and was given an honorable discharge, you should be entitled to these benefits. As, a, like, you may call it a payback. Mm -hmm. 
for the years of service that you, you gave your life to. You know, yeah, guardsmen were called weekend warriors. Yep. Ever since December, the, um, September 1st, 2001, the anniversary date of the bombing at the World Trade Center, mm -hmm. and the United States went ahead and fight against the terrorists. Who did they deploy All right. first? With the Army, mm -hmm. with the Marine Corps, oh, the Army National Guard. See, this is one thing that uh, we had discussed here on the program before. We had a lot of uh, National Guard Reserve mm -hmm. that served multiple tours, and some of them, you know, they get burned out at a certain point. And then they do get those discharges, like say before the 20 year period. You know, so we'll get, I think everybody can empathize, like say with what you're talking about as far as that's concerned. The other thing is budget, which I can't understand when they're saying, well, budget concerns. If we have additional individuals who are eligible, who serve the country to get in, you know, to patronize the PX and the commissary, mm -hmm. What it does, it helps that system because the way they've been cutting down on the different commissary and PXs around the country, they're saying that there's not enough uh, patronage, you know, for the uh, organization. I mean, to come in here in Hawaii, it's, I mean, it might be a little bit different. We have close to about 120,000 veterans, give or take. All right, and for uh, even in, across the board, anyhow. The recognition that you're looking for, I understand that back in November or December, there was supposed to be a ID card for veterans, you know, the recognizers of veteran, you know, and for some reason, they came out and said, well, the system has been so overwhelmed that we can no longer process it. To me, that's a little bull. I mean, you, th you have something in place, and it seems that time after time, we have these different programs that have been announced, and then once they're initially instituted, then uh, you know, got all these tech problems that come up and they say, well, you gotta wait a little bit longer. To me, that's unacceptable, right. you know? And I think is that what you're talking about as far as with getting some sort of formal recognition where as far as having access to the different facilities uh -huh. because you did serve and honorably and you know, not the so-called full time, but to the time that was satisfactory to the country, even one day of service right. is, is the way it is. True, that's very true. Um, you know, the, the thing is, I just was, I was up three o'clock this morning, no. searching the websites on my mobile phone, and I came across this uh, article uh, put out by Military Times. Mm -hmm. And the Department of Defense, back in um, 2016, put in a proposal that their civilian workers would be good to have them have benefits going to the PX. Mm -hmm. Not so, not too much um, commissary, but the PX privileges and the gasoline uh, facilities that they have on, on our military installations. Right. You know, and, and it mentioned, you know, yearly uh, revenue was a little over $130 million mm -hmm. they took for one year. Mm. Out of that $130 million, $24 million was profit. Well, it will go out back to the organization and support it and also have these programs to continue. Mm -hmm. And who, who it serves? It serves the, act, the active personnel that's in the military today. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't understand when they say budget. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you that's know, the more <laughs> money they're getting, they can buy more products, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and such other things. So there's nothing, no cost, right. you know. Um, and, and for us, for me, I have my ID card from the VA yeah. to get my medical treatments done at the uh, Tripler. Anyway, uh, we're gonna take a short break. Okay. You know, I want to part of the program stuff okay. anyhow. Okay. Sounds good. But when we come back, we'll be continuing our conversation with Mr. Alexander and uh, also looking for your feedback, so if you'd like to call in and make any comments about this. But we'll be back in a moment, and this is Hawaii in Uniform. Planning all week for the day of the big game. Watching at home just doesn't feel the same. What on the list is who's gonna drive? It's nice to know you're gonna get home alive. Plan for fun and responsibility. Choose a DD. Captain of our team, it's the DT. 
for every game day. Assign a designated driver. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at 3 o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists both from here and the mainland on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Okay, and you're back with Hawaii Uniform. And again, my name is Calvin, and my special guest today, Mr. Randolph Alexander. May I call you Randolph? Yes, sure. Okay. Um, like I said, to continue in our conversation about the, um, I guess, not the expansion, but the recognition of what the benefits that should be extended, All right? Uh, in covered, uh, what you're trying to cover is not only the veteran, but of course the families, the, the immediate family? Yes, uh, yes. Okay. What uh, response have you gotten from any of the major veteran organizations? Are they aware of what you're trying to do? Yes, I contacted the uh, DAV mm -hmm. at Tripler, mm -hmm. also the American Legion mm -hmm. organization, and you know, they said, they said, I have good ideas, but I need to be the one to go out and get supporters to support my cause. You know, and I, I, don't, I don't understand that because they're the organizations, they're supposed to back me up or help me yeah. through the process because if you only get one person, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You can't move a mountain with one person. Sure. But if you have a few organizations with a lot of membership, then that mountain can be moved. You know, and, and I to, don't know. Yeah, and to this point, the, they're telling you that you need to go out to start the initiative and then they will back you up or you're just still on your own? They just said, they just said right to my Congress uh, representatives, yeah. you know. Uh, I even called my National Guard Association um, for retirees. Yeah. And they said they'll mention it in a general meeting and that was two years ago, and I didn't get an answer back. Uh, to me, again, that's unacceptable. You know, uh, not knocking in these organizations, but uh, I said in private and I said publicly, there's a lot of things that a lot of these organizations can do, you know, to better support, you know, the military, I mean, the veterans community, any, you know, instead of just soliciting for a membership, okay, show what you can do, put your money where your mouth is, you know. If you have the access to the people in Washington for you know legitimate reasons, then that's what they should do. You know, as far as telling you good to go out there and do something on your own, and then may they may or may not follow through and help you out. Again, that's unacceptable as far as from my point of view. You know, so um, except with all the different you know the number of veterans we have over here, um, it is a shame that um, a lot of their issues are not addressed. That I think in a proper way by some of these organizations that claim to be looking out for their interests. So. All right. You know, getting back to my conversation earlier uh, that I went to the uh, late Mark, Senator Mark Takai's office, mm -hmm. my initial visit there, and the gentleman said that, you know, he's going to write a letter to our state legislature and also our representatives in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. to see if they can start something in regards on their behalf, yeah. you know. And uh, he said, but if we can't move it in nationally mm. for all veterans in the United States, then maybe our legislature just can take care of our veterans here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. which we have over 100,000 yep. veterans, you know. And, and I said, oh, that's fine, you know, but we need to get more benefits for our veterans. Yeah, I think over here we would have the opportunity to set the tone or the tenor for, you know, how, you know, for this initiative anyhow, you know, because it affects, of course, the veterans here, I mean, also nation and worldwide with the number of uh, repats we have overseas. Um, you know, it's got to be done. I mean, um, again, the budgetary issue, I don't think it's a non, I mean, it doesn't make any sense, you know, but uh, to enlighten the veterans and their families and also the um, general population about what's happening. That's a good starting point anyhow. How long have you been working, you know, towards this goal? I mean, for the past couple of years, uh, two, three, five years? Five years. Five years. Five years. And no real response at this point? No. No. Yeah. 
What's your next step? What would you like to do? What would you like to see happen? Uh, I just want to be invited to to one of our uh, representatives' um, offices here in Hawaii mm -hmm. and go one on one and tell them exactly what I'm discussing here on this show. Yeah. You know, to me, it's very important. It's not only for me, but for all the veterans mm -hmm. and anybody, any um, female or male that served in the National Guard should be entitled to some type of benefits. Mm -hmm. Back in 1973, they stopped the draft. Mm -hmm. Before that, a lot of young guys, particularly males, yeah. joined the National Guard to get away from the draft because they didn't want to go to the to war mm -hmm. in Vietnam mm -hmm. or the other conflicts that the United States was involved in. Yeah. But after the draft was put on site, mm -hmm. you still had men and women joining the National Guard on their own free will. Yeah. So even though they only served six years, it regardless mm -hmm. how many years of service mm -hmm. they served you know and yeah. they should be entitled to some type of benefit yeah. for the time right the um were you aware of the ids that they were planning to put in place for the veterans Have you heard about that before or? yes oh. i i i went on to uh, vetverify.com uh -huh. to see if i was certified mm -hmm. and uh they got my records, but this is since I already have a Veterans Affairs um, ID card, because mm -hmm. it, it is almost identical. Yep. I don't need one, mm -hmm. you know. But I called the the director of the State of, uh, Veterans Affairs Office at E Wing at the Tripler, mm -hmm. you know, and told him that he said, "Well, if that's what they say, then you don't have to." He's one of the gentlemen that really, really helped me out this past five years oh, since uh, I met him. Ron Hahn? Ron Hahn. Okay, yeah. You know, he's a, very he's a guy. nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he's very concerned mm -hmm. of my my uh, issues that I want to move forward, you know, because, again, he was a member yeah. of the Air Force yeah. and also with mm -hmm. the Air uh, National Guard here in yeah. Hawaii. Mm -hmm. so he knows exactly what I'm I'm talking about. Right. where I'm coming from so he's helping me but again you know he has a lot of things on his mind right now and more other things to take care of with legislature just started in session and right. stuff like that but yep. even 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 that would be a plus for me if I can be invited to the legislature if they want to cover a, a session with military mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind going and speak you okay. know, to them I mean right well, the way it sounds, if you're waiting for an invitation, it may be long in coming anyhow, so you right. may have to take the initiative, you know, take some other supporters. Um, I can only speak for myself for the venue that we're trying to reach now. Um, but uh, if there's something we can do as far as putting the word out there or contacting some people, you know, the our elected officials to get an official response from them about what you're trying to do. Um, I'll, Personally, will commit to that. You know, I would appreciate that. No, like, like I say, you're doing all of us a free, uh, you know, a service anyhow. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, this thing with the ID card, uh, you know, they're telling you, they're telling us now that if you get this thing, it will cover everything. But then, you know, where you say that uh, you got one form of ID, so that should be, you know, suffice. Um, Need to be a better clarification. You know, so we don't have people who are confused and concerned, and after that, you know, you wind up getting angry and feeling disrespected. You know. So, yes, that definitely has to be addressed. You, you know, they also mentioned about that no. part, about the ID card for all <clears throat> veterans, yeah. yeah. And they said about the cost and stuff, yeah. how much it will take to um, make an ID card. No. You know, if they need to charge the veteran, I'm pretty sure the veteran will pay yeah. whatever. Oh, sure. I mean, if it's not an outrageous amount, right, you know, yeah. $20, $25, yeah. I, I think the veterans can come up with that and, and make a lifetime um, ID card for them, mm -hmm. you know, to yep. get benefits, yep. of course, you know. And, and to me, that's the only thing is going to cost is the ID card, I believe so. Yep. But other than that, there's nothing concerning budget. There's, mm -hmm. There shouldn't be no budget work on, um, you know. That's true. Okay. Uh, they're getting down to the wire anyhow, but okay. is there anything else that, Major, you want to touch on before we begin to close out? Well, again, I just want to ask for you folks um, 
response for this to this program on um, to me is very important yep. to all the veterans yeah is there a phone number they can contact you or uh yeah um, cell number is uh, 808-772-9522 that's my cell phone and you can reach me 24 7. Mm -hmm. okay i'd be more than happy to um talk to you on the phone okay Another suggestion you might want to go before the Oahu Veterans Council. They meet at the last Saturday of every month and um, see what uh, they may try to provide for you, you know, you know. But again, we'll help to get the word out and we'll do a follow-up program. Invite you back and let us know how you know, things are going anyhow. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. All right. Anything, any other final words? Uh, no. No. <laughs> okay. Anyhow. Uh, I want to thank you for, you know, coming on the program, but um, we're getting down the wire. I think we got maybe about a minute and a half, something like that. All right. I'm going to be very brief with this. And like uh, this past Saturday, of course, we had a major event that scared the heck out of a lot of people. And I know everybody's been making comments about uh, this, that, and everything else and trying to point fingers and all that. The one thing I see and I still get angry about is the fact that I seen the terror and I heard it in the voice of the people that I loved. And we talk about, you know, now putting more, better things in place as far as bomb shelters, things of that nature. I think we need to get back to the basics. This is my take on it. Getting back to the root of the problem. If you get, if you think about it, there are a lot of people overseas that experienced the terror that we went through. It's about prevention, not about building up and all that. We have a lot of bad guys out there in this world, to be be sure. But as far as some of the, the prominent things that we're dealing, how we're dealing with other countries and how they're dealing with us, the American people need to get more involved so we can prevent things like this, so we don't have to go into that defensive mode. The protection part, think about it. The countdown when you were ahead, when you heard that you only had 15 minutes to live and you seen the terror, people screaming. Think about that. The countdown from 10, 9, 8, 7, and so forth. Think about get involved, hold them accountable, hold ourselves accountable. Thank you. God bless, and until that time.